Hey everyone, it's Colin, how's it going? I've gotten an increasingly large collection of devices that use these rechargeable gumstick batteries. These were common in some portable audio players from the 90s and early 2000s, and while their flat and thin form factor was important in making the devices themselves smaller, it also meant that they needed a dedicated charger. While third-party replacement gumsticks are available, the charger situation is a bit more complicated. The inexpensive ones, frankly, aren't very good. Many of them don't even have proper circuitry where they'll stop charging when the battery is full, which could damage it. And conversely, the good ones aren't very inexpensive. And on top of that, I'd rather not have to buy another charger if I don't have to, especially since I already have one that's perfectly suitable electrically. I've been a big fan of Eneloop rechargeables for a long time, and the charger that came with mine works just fine. And it would actually work to recharge a gumstick battery too, since they're also nickel metal hydride and have the same 1.2 volt rating as an Eneloop, except for the fact that they don't fit. So I set out to build an adapter that could snap into the charger like a AA battery, then have a slot for the gumstick to fit into. And perhaps not surprisingly, someone else also had that same idea, as I found an adapter very similar to what I was thinking of over on Thingiverse. I 3D printed it out of curiosity, and while the gumstick fits fine, there's a couple of other parts about it I'm not thrilled with. First is that the wires are meant to be run externally, and you're on your own to figure out terminals for the contacts on the gumstick. And second, the adapter doesn't actually fit in the Eneloop charger because it was designed for use with a generic one that has larger spring-loaded terminals. Instead of modifying that model, I made my own from scratch. The wires that lead to the terminals are hidden inside the adapter and don't require any soldering. It still 3D prints as one piece, so there's no glue necessary either. I went through a few revisions and failed prints to get to a design that works, and putting it together is pretty easy. Aside from the printed adapter, I just needed some screws, specifically some number four by half inch in both pan and flat heads, along with some wire. Nothing fancy, though 22 gauge is about the largest that'll work. I cut a piece of wire to length by sticking one end in the positive gumstick terminal at the top, then along the inside and estimating about how much would be needed to reach the back of the adapter. I stripped the insulation off of one end, wrapped the wire around one of the flathead screws, then screwed it into the adapter. Next, I trimmed the wire a bit shorter and stripped a longer bit of insulation off the end, then stuck it into the hole in the middle of the adapter. If cut to the right length, you should be able to see the wire strands inside the top screw hole, and the wire itself should sit neatly into the channel in the back. To finish the positive terminal, I just installed a pan head screw to make contact with those wires inside. For the negative terminal, I needed a piece of wire with no insulation on it. I wrapped the end around a pan head screw to get it into the right shape, and stuck the straight end through this hole to the right. The one to the left is for the screw itself. Then I could stick the screw back through the loop of wire and tighten it down. The wire stuck out of the bottom of the adapter and I could trim it to length, then put in the last flathead screw. A few of the wire strands are just peeking out past the side of the screw head, but that's no problem. And that's pretty much it for assembly. I did find that some adjustments needed to be made. First, the gumstick didn't quite fit in the adapter, and to fix that, I just needed to tighten the inside screws to make a little more space. When set correctly, the gumstick should nicely snap into place and have a snug but not tight fit. Second, the adapter itself was too loose inside the Eneloop charger, and again, adjusting the terminal screws was enough to sort this out. But when that was done, it worked great. The charger detects the battery no problem, and because the adapter is flat on the bottom, it doesn't block the LED indicator. There are a couple of things I'd like to change in a future revision of this adapter, though. 
I want to tighten up the tolerances a bit. It stays in the charger just fine, but does have a little bit of room to wiggle. But the bigger thing would be to figure out how to incorporate some kind of spring terminals into the gumstick compartment. As is, it's a friction fit, which requires gently bending the adapter a little to release the battery. If you use the adapter a lot, this could become a point of failure. And finally, I need to figure out a neat way to 3D print the adapter laying down. To minimize the amount of overhangs, it currently needs to be printed standing up, which generally works fine, but I had a couple of occasions where the material curled and got knocked loose from the print bed which of course then turned into a mess. Printing on its side would increase the surface area and thus help with bed adhesion. If you'd like to make one of these for yourself, I've posted links to the 3D model down in the description. I'm still relatively new at CAD and 3D printing, so feel free to make improvements to the design or let me know what I could be doing better. But for a first attempt at something complex like this, I'm pretty happy with it and hopefully others will find it useful, if for no other reason than being able to use a charger you may already have. If you liked the video, I'd appreciate a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe. You can follow me on social media at thisdoesnotcomp. And as always, thanks for watching.